Hello and welcome back. Now our next guest is regularly seen in our Out and About feature. So we thought it was about time we invited him into the Splash of Paint studio to demonstrate how texture and colour can create atmospheric landscapes. So folks, let's sit back and enjoy part one of today's Try Your Hand Up project with leading acrylic artist Fraser Scarf. Thanks Matthew. So I'm going to do a uh, very simple basic sunset scene for you now using Atelier Interactive Acrylics. Um, just as a means of really showing you some of the ways you can start out with the paint, some of the things you can do with it on a very sort of um, simple level, just so you can have a go really if you haven't used it before. So I've got my pre-primed uh, canvas board here, uh, I've got my paints ready to go. And the first thing I want to do is just get rid of the white. Um, nothing worse than a white canvas staring back at you, sort of intimidating you and challenging you to uh, do a good painting. So the first thing I want to do is cover the majority of the white as quickly as I can, just so I've got something to work from um, and to get us underway. Now, because I'm using the interactive acrylics, um, I'm going to be using one of these quite a lot. Uh, this is just a water spray bottle, and I use this throughout the painting just to control the moisture levels on my canvas. Um, and also to spray my brushes with, which helps me to apply the right amount of moisture rather than just relying on dunking them straight into a water pot. So if you see me spraying this over the canvas, I'm just trying to stop the paint drying out and to give myself a nice sort of smooth surface to work on um, and to allow me to keep blending the paint as much as I can. So first things first, just going to give a quick spray over my canvas there. Um, not trying to saturate it like you would with watercolour, uh, just want a nice sort of even mist over the canvas board there. And got a nice big brush here, um, don't want to be fiddling about too soon with this, we want to cover this area um, in nice bold strokes and do lots of blending work, so nice big brush will help with that. And the first colour I'm going to go for is some yellow ochre. And because we're doing a sunset scene, I'm looking for a nice kind of warm haze at the bottom of the picture. Um, so I've got my brush loaded up with the yellow ochre here and just very quickly going to start by going into my canvas and what I want to create is a nice kind of warm haze in the sort of bottom two thirds of the canvas here. So I've applied a, a fairly small amount of the paint but in order to sort of stretch it out further I'm just going to keep giving that a spray which will allow me to work that colour more freely over the surface of the canvas here. And what I definitely don't want is just a solid mass of one colour. So I'm looking to keep the application of the paint fairly loose, fairly rough, so that what we get is a nice kind of gradual change in tone. Nothing that looks sort of too solid or heavy. So just working this gradually over the surface here, just adding a touch more yellow ochre from time to time and just trying to sort of judge how dark I want this to go. With a quick spray. Uh, because I'm using acrylic, I can afford to be sort of fairly rough with it. I don't need to be sort of too fussy uh, about where I apply the paint at this point because I can always go back and change things later. So. When you're using acrylic paint, there's no need to think, oh, I need to get this bit right straight from the off, because nine times out of 10, you can always go back and make changes and sort things out if you run into any difficulties. So I'm just bearing in mind that in my picture here, I'm going to have a horizon line roughly in this area. So whilst I'm still using yellow ochre, I'm actually thinking about making it slightly stronger, just in a nice sort of horizontal band there just to serve as a reminder of where my actual horizon line is going to be in the picture. Uh, we'll just take a bit more of this colour up towards the top of what will be our sort of sky. And this is why you need a big brush as well, you know, this would be uh, you know, a nightmare with a tiny brush, you'd be here for hours. So, you know, the bigger the brush, the sooner you can get onto the sort of uh, meatier part of the painting. You don't need to spend ages at the start sort of worrying too much about your brush strokes and things like that. So that's just about doing it. There's no particular science behind this other than thinking of getting that nice generalized tone down. Good, so I think that will, uh, that will do for the start. 
So having done that, um, we're going to have a sort of area of pale blue at the top of the canvas here. And rather than just mixing that pale blue on my palette and applying it straight to the canvas, what I'm actually going to do is mix my paint on the canvas, which is something I do a lot because I think it gives you a bit more control and it makes everything look a bit more organic rather than sort of pre-mixing a colour and just putting it on straight away. So in order to do that, um, I've got a new clean brush and I'm very simply just going to cover this top third of the canvas that I've left in pure white paint. So I'm just going to get a good load of that on the end of a brush and I'm just very quickly going to go in and apply this layer of white to the top of the canvas. Now you won't really be able to see very well what I'm doing for a minute as the canvas is already white but what I'm trying to do with that white is just get a base tone down if you like um, and that will allow me to blend all the colours into it and it will also soften them out, stop them being too bold and too punchy. Um, I want to keep everything in this picture as sort of hazy and soft as I can. So uh, I just covered that entire section very roughly in my white paint there. And while I've got that white on my brush, what I'm actually going to also do is just put in a little indication um, of where my sun is going to be reflected later on in the picture. So just while I've got that white, it seems like a good opportunity to do that. So I'm going to have a sort of setting sun and it's going to be reflecting into this area here. So just going to make a little mark for myself here while I've got some of that white paint on my brush of where that sun's going to go. So just a few very simple streaks of white paint just as a reference for me later on in the picture to refer back to. So with this area of white that I've just painted here in the sky, I'm just going to go in and make that into the blue sky as I mentioned. And in order to do that I'm just going to grab on the end of my brush just the tiniest amount of phthalo blue. Now because I've got this white base layer there, that's going to soften the blue out, take the intensity out of it, so I don't actually need very much of this blue. So what I'm going to do is just go in and pop a few dabs of that colour onto that white area that I've just painted in. A uh, quick mist over the canvas, and then I'm very simply just going to go in and use my brush and just blend that blue into that white there. And what that white does is just softens the blue out, takes the intensity out of it and stops it looking sort of too bold or garish. So just very quickly going to work that across the surface there. We'll remove Mr. Brush here there because we don't want him in the picture. And just make it ever so slightly darker at the very top of the picture here. And as with this sort of ochre area that we did initially, this is just really going to be something that sits behind all the other work we do in the sky. So it's not sort of too crucial to get this bang on straight from the off. That will probably do for the blue. Okay. So I've blended that in fairly well, got a nice kind of soft blue at the top. If I need to go back to it later and make it stronger, I will. Um, but for now, what I want to do is start to give the picture a bit more structure. So we've got this kind of general haze effect going on. But what we need to do now is start to define where our horizon is, put some clouds into our sky, and just make everything look a bit more interesting. So to do that, I'm going to grab a new brush. And the first thing I want to do is firm up where my horizon line is going to go. So on my palette, I'm going to mix very quickly a nice kind of warm orange colour. So just a mix of yellow and red, unsurprisingly, and just going to make myself a fairly nice, deep, rich orange colour. Touch more yellow there. OK, we'll just give this a try, see how it looks. And yeah, I think that will be about right. So what I'm going to do with this colour then is go in and just firm up where the horizon line is going to be. So I just give my brush a quick spray and I'm just going to take a line all the way along here which will become my horizon line. So 
just very quickly doing that. And what I'm also going to do is take some of that colour down into these areas as well. So these are going to be sort of areas of tone in the water down here. And I'm just very quickly sort of scrubbing those on. Using the paint fairly dry, you'll see from the brush marks. I haven't got a lot of water on my brush at the moment, but that is intentional. Um, just a few quick strokes there. Everything very dry, like I said. And also, in my sky, I'm just going to mark in where some clouds are going to go. So all I'm going to do for that is this highly technical squiggly line. And then I'll go back to that and blend it out later and soften it up and make it look pretty. So I'm just using the paint as a way of drawing, if you like, just to mark in where I want things to go in my sky. So one of the beauties of using acrylic paint, of course, is that you can do things like this because you can manipulate the paint a lot more easily than most mediums and you can always go back and change things. So I'm never afraid of sort of marking things out with the paint or using it as a way of drawing things in for me to refer to later on in the picture. So just scrubbing in these final lines here. So I've got these sort of squiggly lines, um, areas of this warm orange tone in here. Um, what I want to do now is go in and blend them out. So soften them out, sort of make them blend into their surroundings a touch more and make these clouds look more like clouds and less like squiggly lines. So I'm going to just wipe any excess paint off my brush here. And what I'm going to do is go in and just over these lines that I've just painted, I'm just going to give my brush a quick spray, get some moisture on there, a quick spray towards the surface of the canvas. And then I'm going to go in and use that moisture on my brush to unleash some of the nice warm colours from those oranges that I've just applied. And because I'm using the interactive acrylics, I have the ability to go in and sort of reactivate any areas of paint that are dry or difficult to work with. So what I can do is just go in and run my moist brush over these orange areas, spraying my brush as I go. Like I said, that helps me to sort of regulate the moisture I'm using rather than just sort of dunking it in a pot of water all the time. So that's looking okay there. Just looking for a nice kind of warm, hazy tone down here in the bottom third of the picture. And then for these clouds, I'm just going to do exactly the same. So I've sprayed my brush. Then I'm just going to go in and over these squiggly orange lines that I did, I'm just going to start to scrub into that paint. Um, you'll notice I'm being quite physical with the brush here. You do need to be sort of quite firm, really pushing the paint into the surface of the canvas here. And that's allowing me to blend those clouds out, soften everything, and make it look nice and sort of natural looking. Quick spray of the brush. And then just going over these cloud shapes. And although I haven't sort of drawn the clouds out in any great detail, I'm just keeping the shape of them in mind, thinking about what looks natural um, and what's going to work for the picture. Um, clouds are, of course, quite tricky things to paint because they're so varied. So just trying to keep them looking as loose and natural as I possibly can. Just very quickly then, just taking my moist brush over here, like so. So that's got the basic clouds in. So that's a good time to have a break, let these clouds dry, and then I'll come back in a bit and show you how we're going to work into the foreground of the picture. 